All right, advanced text. We're gonna be doing some animation. I'm gonna show you a couple procedures and really popular ways that people deal with text. I'm gonna show you how to do that here in Blender. We're gonna be using EV and Cycles. And for a bonus, I'm gonna show you how to make that Marvel look right here with that, with those lines here and how it makes that box. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in Blender, how to make this animation right here, which is uh, right here. This is the animation we're gonna be going through. It's really easy, a little more simple than you would think. So let's get into it. Okay, so first off, I want to talk about something that you might encounter when it comes to using fonts here in Blender. You aren't actually just set on one font. So let's go ahead and add a text, bring it here. I'm going to type in just a capital B and scale it up. And one thing I always like to do when I go to my text is right here on the alignment in the paragraph, put it center and center. So if you go and actually convert this text, the anchor point will be right here in the middle. And that's what you want when it comes to animating. I mean, depending on what the animation is, but I like to be right there in the center. So let's go ahead and add a font. So hit this font drop down. I'm gonna go ahead and add a font that I already know isn't going to work correctly just to show you guys what you might encounter. So I'm gonna go here and select bad font. So we're not talking about the way the font looks, but let's go over to the geometry and let's add some extrusion. So that works fine. But once we add some bevel, there we go. We have a problem here. So when it comes to dealing with fonts in Blender, you might encounter some difficulties and some problems. So when you're using them, be sure to test them out. Make sure they work correctly before committing them to your design. Now, if you just go in Google and type in free fonts, there are thousands and thousands of fonts at your disposal. So you can go ahead and download one or use the default font that Blender provides. So I'm gonna go ahead and substitute this font for one that I know is really cool and works right. That's gonna be this one right here. Now, right here in the geometry side, this is really, really cool. Before you actually go ahead and convert text, you want to stay in here so that you don't have as many problems with vertices and things like that. And you can play with offset. If I hit offset, you can see a problem happening. So, you know, you're just gonna get problems sometimes when you're dealing with it. But I'm gonna go ahead and add bevel to this right here. So just one bevel, and right here on resolution, I'm gonna bring it down to zero so we get a nice, sharp edge. And the reason why I like to do that is when light hits it, we get some really fun stuff going on. All right, I'm gonna show you a really quick trick. This is just a very easy typography thing to have some fun with. So I'm gonna go and pick this curly one right here. So I'm gonna take this depth off right here, add some extrusion, just a little bit, just like that. And right here on offset, so I'm gonna take the A here and just select offset of one. So it just makes this font thicker. And then I'm gonna duplicate this and then I'm gonna take the offset, bring it back down, and extrude it just a little bit more. And then here we go. And here you go, you have some fun font. If you use Illustrator, this would be called a stroke. But basically, there you go, you have, you can add one material to this one, and one material to that one, and you have a really cool 3D text that you can play with. Of course, it's gonna glitch out on some fonts, but just play around with them and find a font that really works and is really cool for you. All right, so let's go ahead and tackle that animation that I showed you this animation right here, and also all the shading you see, we are gonna be tackling that shading. We're gonna show you how to do these scratches, this lighting, this glare right here. Um, so this one's gonna be done in Eevee, just a heads up. So let's go ahead and add some text right here, and let's center it just like I showed. And I'm gonna type in B, just like that. Go ahead and add the font that I want. All right, so here's the font that I am looking for, just like that. And I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna be spelling out Blender, so B-L-E-N-D-E-R, that is seven characters. So B, and we want these all to be separate. So take that just like that, and I'm gonna duplicate all these. All right, so now we have all seven characters. I'm gonna just move it here to the center, and let's spell out Blender. All right, we have Blender here. So like I said in the beginning, centering it will make your anchor point right here in the middle, which is exactly what we want, and I'm gonna show you why. So just first off, go to Edit and Preferences. Right here on Animation, make sure your default interpolation here is on Bezier, because we're gonna wanna have some nice Bezier animations. Just makes it nice and smooth. So let's go ahead and make this character spin. So if you go over here to the Transform right here, you could just make him spin right here on the X rotation. So I'm gonna hit this little icon here, click that one, two, maybe about a two second flip, and then type in 360, which rotates it at 360 degrees, and let's watch the animation. All right, way too fast. 
I'm just going to take this one and stretch it out to maybe frame 40. I think that might be good. All right, perfect. So they'll stretch about 40 frames per animation. Now I'm going to take this L and I'm going to do the same animation. But I want them to start slightly after each other so it goes this way. So I'll take this one right here, maybe right about there. I'll take the L and I'll do that same animation and then stretch it out. And then I want the L to stop a little bit after the, when the B stops. So right about there and then type in 360, do that. And then we can watch this animation. Perfect. Now, like I said, you want them to start and finish a little bit after each other. So I'm going to do that for all these letters so that it works just the way we want. All right, so here we go. I finished the animations, pretty simple. Just like that. It's very, very simple. But I'm sure if you're using animation nodes, it'd be a little bit easier. Maybe you can use it empty and just slide it across. But I like to keep my tutorials outside of those third party plugins that are very difficult to learn. So this is a very simple animation. And you can, using this rotation, you can have a lot of creativity and play with other things and do even more animations rather than just this specific one. Now let's go ahead and shade this in Eevee. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly add in a plane. I'm going to bring them down just like that and just scale them up. Now I'm going to quickly I'm going to quickly go add in an HDRI. If you use HDRI Haven, it's a really really cool resource. You can go to the HDRIs and just pick one and I'm going to go ahead and just pick a random one, probably this one here, and download the 4K version of it. Now once you have it downloaded, you go over here to the world settings, click this little color icon and type it and click environment texture and click open. Now before we hit render, go over here to the little camera icon, switch from cycles to EV. I'm going to click Z and render and let's check out how it looks. All right, pretty blown out. So let's go ahead here on the plane and give it a black color just like that. And we'll slide it all the way down. And then here on the roughness, we'll make it all completely rough and we'll give it a roughness of actually 10. So it's completely black. Now, a lot of you would probably tell me to go down here to film and click transparent. But the problem with that is, but the problem with that is when I render it, we would lose the bloom and it would just be as if I turned off bloom and it would just look like that. And we want the bloom because that bloom is great. So we're going to leave it there and just have a nice black background, a little hack for you. Make sure your roughness is set at 10 so there's nothing shown, no reflective. And you can see there it is. So let's go ahead and add a metallic shader to this. So we're going to make it metallic here and make it a little bit darker. Now, select the B, hold down shift and select all the letters here, just like that. And then the R as the last one, control L, which would be control link materials. And it applies all those materials to our letters here. So now when we check out the render, or right now we check out the animation, it's beautiful. All right, so now let's go ahead and add some cool shading stuff. So go over here to the shading tab here in 2.8 and hit Z render and I'm going to zoom in here. So everything will be done here in the bump settings. So go over here and add a bump node that will allow us to add scratches and bumps and things. So bring that right here, plug that into the normal. And the first thing we're going to add is a color ramp. I'm just going to be going here linearly. So plug the color into the height here and let's add a musgrave texture. So now that we have this, I'm going to go ahead and add a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. And we'll plug the object coordinate into the vector here in the mapping and the vector in here to the vector. So we're going to bring our scale here up by about, say, bring about about 30. We're going to make a detail at four, make our dimension here at 1.5 lumosity will make it four and now we have some pretty cool dents going on now let's take our color ramp and just bring it over here just slightly so we have these dents you can actually leave it at that it looks pretty cool on its own you can take the strength and make it smaller dense or really deep dense if you want I'm gonna bring it to right about there but I don't like the way that looks so we're gonna go over here to the mapping node and we're gonna give it a scale of say 12. So now we have 
the cuts go in this direction and it looks pretty cool but I want to add some more details in these cuts it's pretty limited on the detail that we can add to it so I'm gonna go over here to the vector line and add a noise texture so plug it in right there so now we get these crazy swirls but we want to control how much swirl happens so let's add a mix RGB right there plug it in and then take the object coordinate and plug that into the color too and so what that's going to allow us to do is if we bring it all the way to the factor on one we're looking at the nodes over here and if we bring it all the way over here it's affecting it just like the way we did before we added the mix so what that allows us to do is one if we go here to the detail we'll just check it out bring the detail all the way up and now we have all this bumpy stuff going on so we'll bring the factor this way and then we'll just scale it just a little bit so now we have some randomness in our scratches but this is too many scratches for me it's just really ridiculous so we're gonna go here to the color ramp and bring it down till we have just enough scratches kinda of like that all over and then we can take our scale here bring it down have much bigger scratches much smaller scratches and then we can also scale them this way just like that doing whatever you want and having some fun they're not really photorealistic scratches but it's better than nothing so now we're gonna have now we have a problem here is that everything's duplicated you can see this is the same here same here it's the same scratch they're the same scratches on all the letters and we need some randomization so you could either make a different shader for every single letter or you can do this really cool trick that string fairy showed me so all credit goes to him on this really really genius procedure so what we're gonna do is take this mapping node which basically control controls where things are positioned here on our nodes so we're gonna take the mapping node hit shift D duplicate it and on, on the on the location and rotation make everything hundred and eighty and so basically we're just messing up the location of everything and so alright so now we have a completely different mapping node here now we need to mix them just like we did so we're gonna add a mix RGB plug it in right there and then plug the vector into the color too and so now we have this but it's not really doing anything if we bring it all the way over the air bring it all the way over here it's not showing anything so we need to tell it what to do so let's add a object info node now this is a really cool node if we take this random node right here and plug it into the factor telling it what to do there bam now we have randomization going on everywhere and the same scratch is not on each letter and so it's taking these two and combining them so it's taking these two and combining them into this one and then this node randomizes that and everything goes crazy so now we can play around with it if you see anything weird going on that you don't like so just like that we have random scratches that aren't duplicated on each letter so now that we have our scratches we have some really cool text go ahead and you can render that and you have a really cool intro animation all right now let's get into this Marvel thing right here so it's very very simple let's go ahead and make a new project so let's go ahead and add our text now you can go ahead and Google Marvel font if you want I'm gonna stay away from that font and just show you guys how to do it so we're going to here and center everything and type in blend just like that so we're just going to take this default blender font here and let's go ahead and add some geometry so extrude it like that now let's add a box so mesh cube we're going to go ahead and scale it down just like that however thick you want your marvel logo to be just like that and i'm going to go ahead and add my camera go ahead add my camera all right first thing we need to do is cut those holes so let's take this blend here and convert so go to your search C O N V convert to and make, click mesh so now your text is a full mesh now let's take this box go over here to modifiers and add a boolean modifier cutting holes so here on object we'll select text and then we'll hit H and now we have this cut through and we can go ahead and apply that modifier so now we have that so it's cut in let's go ahead to the shader editor and let's add a metallic texture here Oh, shader not texture 
make it metallic here, make it a little bit darker, just like that. All right, now we need to add some roughness. So now we need to add those sort of brushed metal look. So that'll be done in the roughness here. So let's type in a color ramp, plug the color ramp into the roughness here, and let's get a noise texture. Plug the noise texture into the color ramp. And now we have this going on. Just a little bit of fun stuff happening. If you go up to the scale, you can kind of see it happening, but it's not the way we want. We want it to be stretched. So let's add a texture coordinate. And let's add a mapping node. So plug the object into the vector and the mapping into the vector here. And you can watch it happen. We'll take the scale here and just scale it down just like that. And then we'll take the color ramp and expound on that just, just like that. And then we can bring up the scale, bring it down, and we can stretch it even more. So we get some nice brushed metal, just like that. And then we can bring the color ramp down just a little bit. So now we have that really nice brushed metal look that if you go type in marble, you can see same thing. We got some nice brushed metal just like we have here. So it's really, really simple. All right, now let's go ahead and get this really cool sci-fi look going on. So let's go ahead, delete this. Let's add some new font, some new text. So now we have the B here. Let's go ahead and extrude it out just a little bit. Bring the depth here, click it once, and bring the resolution down. And the reason why we want to bevel it just like that so that when the light hits it, make it really bright and it glares. And we're going to be using cycles for this. I'm going to scale this guy up all the way here. And let's add some lighting. So before we add lighting, let's just add a simple metallic texture shader. I keep saying texture and make it fairly dark. So let's go ahead and add our lighting. So for the first light, we're going to add an area. Bring it up just right about here. And then I'm going to go and scale it pretty far out. So I'm going to go ahead and scale it far out like that and then make it pretty skinny. We want a, just a very bright light right here in the middle. And then I'm going to hit R and diagonal just like that. And if we hit rendered, it's not very bright. So we're going to go ahead, click use nodes and make it brightness of 100, maybe brightness of 50. That looks right about what we're looking for. Now let's go add another area light. Bring it here just like that. I'm going to hit R twice so we can point it the way we want. Bring it up. Just position it right here on the edge of the B. And then also we'll scale it down a little bit and then stretch it out just like that. And then we'll make that one red and give it a strength of 100. And if we check it out, you can see it's accenting right there. So I'm going to actually make it a strength of 300 and we're going to do the same thing here on the other side. So I'm just going to duplicate this, bring it down, bring it here, and then just turn it around just like that. So now we have on this side, we'll make this one a light blue and you can see it accenting here, accenting here, and then I'm going to make my background black. So now we have some cool stuff going on with this B and I'm going to make this color even a bit darker. So now we have this so far. So let's go and add some roughness and those scratches that we already did to this. So I'm going to stay in look dev and Eevee so I can not overload my computer for now. So let's add a color ramp to the roughness. And all we're going to do is add a noise texture and add some turbulence to that noise texture. It's very, very simple. So color right into there and then add some distortion and then scale it up just slightly. Get that smoky look. Then if we go to the cycles render, you can see it looks really, really cool. Bring the distortion down a little bit. So now we have that. Let's go ahead and add those scratches just like we did originally. So you can just copy the procedure I did. I'm not going to go through it again. You can go back and redo the scratches just like I did on the other. All right, so now we have that text we're looking for. We have this really cool bright streak going through here. And then we have these bright lights. I'm going to go ahead and make those lights even brighter. Make it 500 and on the red one also make it 
500 and go ahead and render that and I'll show you how to get that glare here in cycles. So I'll just click render, render image. All right, so once your text is rendered, it should look something like this. So right up here in Blender 2.8, there's a compositing tab, so you can click that. So we're gonna go into compositing here and we're gonna add right here in the middle a viewer node. So we're gonna, so we're gonna take this composite node. So we're gonna type in viewer and we're gonna take this one, delete it, image, plug into the viewer. So now we have this viewer node. So now we need to type in glare. So GL, type in glare, plug it right here in the middle, and then you can watch the magic happen. So now you can see this going on here with the B. So you can go back into the glare node, and instead of streaks, you can make it fog glow, just like that. So we just get a nice soft fog. And now we can take another glare node, plug that in, and now we get the streaks. So you can actually stack these nodes on top of each other. So now I'm gonna say give it only two streaks, so they just go this way just like that. So now if we go back to the rendering tab, click this drop down and click viewer node, and now we have this really awesome, glary, sci-fi looking text. And if you wanna save it, right up here it says image, save as, and you would save it wherever you want. So there you go, I showed you about three really cool ways you can play with text in Blender and have some fun, and get some really cool results. And there you go, thanks for watching.